Welcome to the training video for the ADM Tubs of Fun Carnival Ride. In this video, we will show you how to set up, operate, and tear down a Tubs of Fun unit. This specific unit was renamed Spin Cycle by the ride's owner. After positioning the ride on a flat or semi-flat surface, disconnect the ride from the truck using the jack on the tongue of the trailer. After disconnecting the truck, remove the fencing from the racks on both sides of the ride trailer. Once all of the fencing is removed, remove the fence rack by removing the clevis pin and sliding the fence rack off the jack foot. Repeat this step for the remaining three fence racks. There are three different stabilizing systems that the Tubs of Fun Ride has had over the years. Jack feet only, stabilizer jacks only, and stabilizer jacks with jack feet. In this video, we are going to show you how to set up both jack feet only units and jack feet with stabilizer jack units. The first setup method is with jack feet only. For this method, you'll want to make sure that you use the wheel chocks on the wheels to prevent the ride from sliding forward or backwards. Using the tongue jack, lower the front of the trailer as far down as it can go. Then, go to the back of the ride to lower those jack feet first. Pull the clevis pin and lower the foot until it hits the ground. Insert the clevis pin back in the jack foot on the highest hole possible below the ride's frame. Repeat this step for the other rear jack foot. For all of the jack feet, use wood boards underneath the foot regardless of the surface type. When placing the clevis pin, make sure that the weight is resting on the body of the pin and not on the head. After the back jack feet are lowered and pinned, crank the front of the trailer up as high as possible using the tongue jack. After the tongue of the trailer is up and as high as possible, lower the two jack feet on the front of the ride. Once completed, lower the tongue jack. Use a level to make sure the ride is semi-level. It is important to bring different sizes of wood boards to place under the jack feet so you're ready for all surface types. The second method to level and secure the ride is with the jack feet and the stabilizer jacks. For this method, after disconnecting the truck, make sure the trailer is as level as possible front and back with the tongue jack. Go to the first stabilizer jack, swivel it down, and crank the stabilizer jack down. At this point, you don't need to put any pressure on the stabilizer jack. Repeat this step for the other three corner stabilizer jacks. Once all of the jacks are down, then remove the clevis pin from the jack foot and lower the jack foot all the way to the ground. Insert the pin in the highest hole possible by using the stabilizer jack to lift the ride frame in order to reveal the next hole. The majority of the ride's weight should be on the jack feet, but raise the frame as little as possible. Once the pin is in the highest hole on the jack foot, lower the ride back down to rest on the pin of the foot. The pin that was used to secure the fence rack can be put in the leg for safekeeping, but serves no function to the operation of the ride. Repeat these steps for the remaining jack feet. Make sure the ride is level from front to back and side to side. If not level, add additional pieces of wood to ensure the ride is semi-level. Once the jack feet are bearing the weight on the ride and the ride frame is level, you can crank up the jack on the tongue and swivel the jack to the transport position. Next, you'll need to remove the tongue. First, disconnect the torque rods that connect the frame of the trailer to the tongue. Start with a turnbuckle torque rod. Loosen the turnbuckle, pull the R-pins on both ends of the rod, and then remove it from the tabs. Repeat this on the rigid torque rods that does not have the turnbuckle. Make sure to replace the R-pins in the torque rods so they don't get lost. Next, you'll need to remove the electrical. Start by disconnecting the emergency brake control and then disconnecting the wiring from the tongue. Instead of using zip ties, Velcro ties are easy and reusable. You can find these Velcro cable ties at a hardware store like Home Depot. Coil the cable and place it under the trailer. Remove the clevis pin that holds the tongue in the frame of the trailer. Using two people, remove the tongue from the frame of the ride. Replace the clevis pin in the sleeves so it does not get lost. 
If your ride has a crown of lights, it's easiest to install it at this point of the ride installation. Remove each light bar by removing the pin and sliding the light bar out of the transport bracket. Make sure to replace the pin after the light bar has been removed so it doesn't get lost. Next, install the light bars on the crown light brackets. If you have LED RGB 1 through 16 pucks, make sure you install the light bars in the proper order where one bar has 1 through 8 pucks and the other one next to it is 9 through 16. Once the light bars are installed, plug in each light bar to the outlets inside of the crown light brackets. It does not matter what outlet to use to plug in each bar. After the light bars are installed, it's time to pivot the sweeps in place. Start with the lower four sweep arms. First, remove the pin from the sweep holder. Pull the sweep arm off and put the pin back in the sweep holder so it doesn't get lost. Pull the sweep arm so it's in place for operation. You can generally tell where the sweep needs to be by looking where the sweep bolsters are on the main drive plate. Repeat this step for the remaining three lower sweeps. Sometimes the pins are a little difficult to remove. When needed, use a rubber mallet to persuade the pin out of its position. Once all of the lower sweeps are in place, remove the four sweep holders from the frame and place them under the ride for storage. You do not need to remove the clevis pin. The pin is only there to stop it from sliding down any further. After the four lower sweep holders are removed, you'll then need to disconnect and remove the tail light panel. First, disconnect the four pin connection near the center of the frame and remove the wiring from the sweep. After coiling the electrical cable, remove the pin underneath the elevated tub and remove the tail light panel. Replace the pin in the tail light panel or on the transport bracket. The next step is lowering the elevated sweep arms. We recommend purchasing a winch like this one to lower and raise the sweep arms as they are very heavy. In order to use a winch, you'll need to install an eye bolt on the center tower as shown here. For this setup, we will be using a worn handheld winch. Start with a sweep arm that has a pivoting sweep bolster, which in most cases should be number five. The last tub to be lowered is the front sweep arm, which is number two. Connect the winch to the eye hook on the top of the center tower. Extend the cable and attach it to the sweep tab. Before raising the sweep arm, remove the clevis pin that holds the sweep support rod in the transport sweep tab and pivot the support rod off to the side. Use the winch to slowly raise the sweep arm. Remove the pin from the sweep holder and remove the sweep holder from the frame. Slowly lower the sweep arm to the operating position and install the support rod back onto the sweep, but this time in the operating tab. Disconnect the winch cable from the sweep arm and retract the cable while keeping pressure on the cable. Remove the winch from the center tower and move it to the other side to lower the number two sweep arm. The number two sweep arm is the only sweep arm that does not pivot and should be removed last. Repeat all of the steps from the number five sweep arm. Next, you'll need to install the spreader bars. Remove the pins from the spreader bar transport bracket. These pins will need to be reused to install the spreader bars. Each spreader bar has welded dots to indicate which sweep arms they attach to. Match up the spreader bar number to the sweep number and attach the spreader bar on both sides using the clevis pin to secure it. If needed, twist the end of the spreader bar to match up to the tab. Repeat this step for the other spreader bars, but do not go out of order. If you start with one and two, then continue with two and three, then three and four, and so on. Once all of the spreader bars are attached, it is time to hook up the control panel. Attach the control cable on the electrical box and run it to the control panel, which will be near the fence line. Connect the control cable to the control panel. Next, you'll need to hook up the power to the ride. When you first get your ride, you will notice that the power cord comes with bare pigtails like shown here. It is recommended to use 50 amp service only to power the ride. 
you can use many different types of 50 amp plugs. Shown here is a 50 amp twist lock plug, which is commonly used on large tow behind generators. To turn on the power to the ride, open up the electrical box at the front of the ride using a flathead screwdriver or something similar. Turn on each circuit breaker one at a time and then lock up the box. To control the ride, first open the control console and ensure that the controller dial is turned to zero and the switch is off. To start the motor, you will first need to release the emergency stop button. Do this by twisting the button in the direction of the arrows and then allowing the button to pop up. Next, press the green button on the motor control switch to turn the motor on. To start the ride, turn the switch on the hydraulic control to the on position. Then, slowly turn the dial to put the ride in motion. Depending on your specific ride, there may be a slight delay in the ride movement as you turn the dial. To stop the ride, simply turn the hydraulic control switch off and turn the dial back to zero, which resets the controls for the next ride. When it comes time to tear down the ride, first turn off the motor and press the emergency stop button. Close the lid on the control console and fasten it shut. Next, go to the electrical box on the ride. Open it and turn off each circuit breaker one by one. When finished, close and secure the electrical box. Disconnect the power and then disconnect the control cable from the electrical box on the ride and from the control panel. Coil the cable and stow it for transport. Next, Manually spin the ride so the number two sweep, or the sweep that does not pivot, is in the front and center of the trailer. Disconnect the two spreader bars that attach the number two sweep. This is the first sweep arm that gets lifted into the transport position so the ride does not spin while tearing down the attraction. Attach the winch on the center tower and then install the number two sweep holder. Make sure the number of welded dots Match up on the sweep holder and the frame. Extend the cable from the winch and attach it to the sweep tab. Before raising the sweep arm, remove the clevis pin that holds the sweep support rod in the transport sweep tab and pivot the support rod off to the side. Raise the sweep arm up and slowly lower it onto the sweep holder. Before the sweep arm makes contact with the sweep holder, insert the pin through the arm tab and the tab on the sweep holder. Then slowly lower the sweep arm so it rests on the holder. Replace the sweep support rod and the transport tab on the swing arm. Next, reinstall the hitch tongue. Remove the clevis pin from the tongue sleeve and insert the hitch tongue into the sleeve. Once the tongue is fully in the sleeve, insert the clevis pin to secure the tongue. Pivot the jack down and crank it down so it just touches the ground. Run the trailer electric wiring and fasten it to the hitch tongue. Make sure to reconnect the emergency brake cable. Next, attach the rigid torque rod and then the turnbuckle torque rod. Tighten the turnbuckle so it is as snug as possible. After the hitch is installed, slide the number one and number three sweep holders back into their brackets, once again lining up the welded dots. Remove the top pin that holds the sweep to the sweep holder and then ensure that the pin is centered so the weight is on the body of the pin, not the head. Disconnect the spreader bar from either sweeps number 3 and number 4 or sweeps number 1 and number 6. Pivot the sweep arm toward the sweep holder. You'll need to both pull and lift the sweep onto the sweep holder. You may need to use a rubber mallet to line up the holes on the two tabs. Once the holes line up, insert the pin and secure with the R pin. Once the second sweep arm is secured, move to the next sweep arm and repeat the same process of removing the spreader bar, pivoting the sweep, and securing onto the sweep holder. After the front three sweep arms are secure, move to the back to finish the last three. Again, you'll need to start with the middle sweep, which you'll once again need the winch to lift. Make sure to remove the sweep support rod before lifting the sweep arm. Next, install the tail light panel and run the electrical wiring, making sure you secure it to the sweep arm. Once the number five sweep arm has been lifted and secured into place, install the two sweep holders, 
remove the spreader bars, and install the sweep arms on the sweep holder fastening it with the pin. Next, the spreader bars will need to be racked for transport. Start by sliding all of the spreader bars in and slide them all the way over so they all fit. After they're all in, one by one, secure them to the transport rack with a clevis pin. Once the spreader bars are secured for transport, unplug and remove the light bars from the crown and install them back on the light bar transport brackets. Make sure that the pin is placed and secured in each light bar. Next, raise the ride by lowering the stabilizer jacks, remove the pin from the jack feet, and raise them up as far as they go. Insert the clevis pin on the top side so it doesn't slide down during transport. Reinstall the fence rack and put the second clevis pin above the fence rack sleeve. Next, raise the stabilizer jacks and swivel them for transport. Repeat these same steps on the other side of the ride. Finally, rack the fencing. Strap the fencing down and hook up the ride to the transport vehicle. Thanks again for watching this training video on the ADM Tubs of Fun.